80% of those on the wait list for a transplant in California are people of color. But that tense wait is made even more so by the lack of people of color who are donors. Kyla Aquino Irving, the Director of External Affairs for Sierra Donor Services, and Jess Chires, father of a Sacramento police officer who made one of these life saving gifts, now with me live to talk more about what's happening this weekend that can change those numbers. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you so much for having us. Definitely. Jess, you and your wife, who's there also, are Donate Life ambassadors who will be sharing the message of organ and tissue donation among people of color tomorrow at the West Sacramento Walgreens store on behalf of your son, Joseph. He collapsed while on duty. Please tell me a little bit about him and how many people he was able to help because of the choice he made to be a donor. Well, Joe, when he became a police officer, before he became a police officer, he asked me if he could become a donor if something happened to him out in the street. And I said, no, he couldn't. But not knowing, six months later, when he became a police officer, uh, he collapsed out there. And uh, when I was in the hospital, I was given the, the opportunity to change my mind. And i glad I did because... Uh, Joe was able to save four lives the mm. day he passed. And about five years later, I got to meet the gentleman that has my son's heart. Wow. Wow. What, what a gift and a gift that he keeps giving every single day. Kyla, Joseph was of Mexican heritage, so he would have made for a Mexican patient's best chance at a needed organ since the best match comes from someone with compatible blood types and tissue markers, someone of your same racial or ethnic group. Since that is known and has been known for a long time, Kyla, why does this message seem to not be getting out to some demographic groups? I think I understand because many people of color have experienced egregious, you know, experiences through the medical facility. Um, I mean, if you look at just recent history, there have been and current news, um, people of color are not often provided access to health care or not provided the best access to health care. So I can totally understand why people may not trust the process. Um, I come from an immigrant community. I'm from the Philippines. And I know a lot of people from other countries don't have um, the experience of a positive um, government organization that has a way to monitor and manage and make sure that people are not exploited. So, you know, the mistrust comes from a lot of different places. And we're here to dispel a lot of those myths and let people know that saying yes to donation can save up to eight lives and improve the lives of potentially 75 more with um, tissue wow. donation. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much information out there um, that we hope to spread to let people know um, that it is a great thing and that you can trust the way that we, we make these lives saved every day. Tomorrow, Jess, his wife, and three other sets of Donate Life ambassadors will be at Walgreens stores in West Sacramento, Sacramento, Elk Grove, and Roseville starting at 10 a.m. to talk about organ donation. Kyla, why Walgreens? Why try to recruit and get the word out this way? Well, Walgreens is so prevalent all over the country. Um, we're lucky that Walgreens uh, nationwide has selected to, you know, choose organ donation as an issue that they want to lean in on. Um, we'll not just be alone technically 40,000 other locations across the country will be participating as well um, if you want more information you can go to sierradonor.org if you're not able to get to walgreens tomorrow um, and you can learn all about organ donation and registering as an organ eye or tissue donor jess how do you feel about carrying forward with this life-saving effort in your son's name and going out to talk to people you changed your mind in a very difficult moment after your son collapsed and ended up passing away while he was on duty what kind of feeling is this giving to you right now to participate in this uh, i'm a really uh, a proud father that i was given a second chance the recipients think they had second chance in life but god gave me the second chance of life and I'm just so thankful that I did change my mind and, and to honor not only God, but my son. 
your wife, kind of the silent type there, but I see her nodding, talking about how proud that this is making the both of you. Kylie, even if someone does decide to donate, it is critical that their loved ones know what their wishes are. Joseph came to talk to dad and obviously took dad's advice and didn't go ahead and move forward with this on his own, but he was at least having the conversation. People need to have the conversation, right? Absolutely, but I will say that had Joseph been a registered donor, sorry to tell you, dad, you wouldn't have been able to rescind that decision. So if you know that you feel strongly about becoming an organ donor, we ask that you register. Your family won't be able to rescind your decision. And I have to say that's important because I've lost friends of color who've waited for organs and have been in that critical time when they've been called upon to receive their organs and just be to be told that families have rescinded. So I urge everyone, you know, absolutely talk to your family so that there's no mistake that this is something that you believe in, in saving other people's lives through your own. I am on the Marrow Registry. Tomorrow there are going to be lots of opportunities around our region at Walgreens to be able to find out more about this. You don't necessarily have to decide tomorrow, but you can, like, you know, wade right. into the information. Thank you all so much for coming in to share about this and for sharing about your son and the gifts that he's made. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely good luck tomorrow. We appreciate you. Thank you.